Good morning. Thanks for joining me for a daily practice check-in. Listen, listen, listen. This beautiful sound calls us back to our true home. The first mindfulness training. Aware of the suffering caused by the destruction of life, I vow to cultivate compassion and learn ways to protect the lives of people, animals, plants, and minerals. I'm determined not to kill, not to let others kill, and not to condone any act of killing in the world, in my thinking, or in my way of life. our Dharma lessons, we've been reading Ajahn Chah's book, Everything is Teaching Us, and we're continuing in a talk and question and answer format called The Dharma Goes Westward. Question. Is that Vimamsa? Answer. It means understanding cause and result. Question. Then the teachings talk about Chanda, aspiration, Viriya, exertion, and Chitta, mind. Together with Vimamsa, these are the four Itapada, basis for accomplishment. Answer. When there's satisfaction, is it with something that is correct? Is exertion correct? Vimamsa has to be present with these other factors. Question. Are Chitta and Vimamsa different? Answer. Vimamsa is investigation. It means skillfulness or wisdom. It is a factor of the mind. You can say that chanda is mind, varia is mind, chitta is mind, vimamsa is mind. They are all aspects of mind. They all can be summarized as mind, but here they are distinguished for the purpose of pointing out these different factors of the mind. If there is satisfaction, we may not know if it is right or wrong. If there is exertion, we don't know if it's right or wrong. Is what we call mind the real mind? There has to be vimamsa to discern these things. When we, practice, when we investigate the other factors with wise discernment, our practice gradually comes to be correct and we can understand the Dharma. But Dharma doesn't bring much benefit if we don't practice meditation. We don't really know what it is all about. These factors are always present in the mind of real practitioners. Then, even if they go astray, they will be aware of that and be able to correct it. So their path of practice is continuous. People may look at you and feel your way of life. Your interest in Dharma makes no sense. Others may say that if you want to practice Dharma, you ought to be ordained as a monk. Being ordained is not really the crucial point. It's how you practice. As it's said, one should be one's own witness. Don't take others as your witness. It means learning to trust yourself. Then there's no loss. People may think you're crazy, but never mind. They don't know anything about Dharma. Others' words can't measure your practice, and you don't realize the Dharma because of what others say. I mean, the real Dharma. The teachings others give you are to show you the path, but that isn't real knowledge. When people meet the Dharma, they realize it specifically within themselves. So the Buddha said, the Tathagata is merely one who shows the way. When someone is ordained, I tell them, our respons responsibility is only this part, the reciting Acharya have done their chanting. I have given you the going forth and vows of ordination. Now our job is done. The rest is up to you to do the practice correctly. Teachings can be most profound, but those who listen may not understand. But never mind. Don't be perplexed over profundity or lack of it. Just do the practice wholeheartedly, and you can arrive at real understanding. It will bring you to the same place the teachings are talking about.
May all beings be well. May all beings be happy. May all beings be at peace. Sadhu. 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 Thanks for joining me today.